uh, I tend to have much more in common with uh, Comrade Bishop Kuka, possibly than uh, Mike can claim. At least by height, we look alike. And I needed to readjust this microphone to reflect the, the size and the height of me and uh, the guest speaker. But today, this is where the similarity ends. I really disagree with Bishop Kuka, with your narrative, which from my point of view, point of view runs contrary to the spirit of the team of this gathering. To some extent, I think Mike also went on that uh, intellectual uh, uh, discourse about the issue of debate. I think the truth is that we are not supposed to be a debating society. Uh, it talks so much about Jefferson, 1977, and then Mike built on it to amplify that we don't have a perfect document. American document was made by the people. I think we are talking of nation building, to build a nation. Yes, we can have debate, but it's just the means. The end is to build a nation. And once again, please kindly help me to appreciate Eric Osage with a special round of applause. I say so because the choice of the five or four people that he had, made, he had recognized today shows that in spite of the challenges, and there are many challenges, we are actually building a nation. And I think guest speakers, discussants should help to bring inclusive narrative, not exclusive, not divisive narratives. Help me appreciate Governor Wiki once again of River State. A special round of applause for you. I don't agree with some of your politics. And I used to joke from afar that if only you could be a member of my party or let me put it this way, the party that I used to be, you know, I ran for governorship in Kwara State, Labour Party of Nigeria, we will have made you a presidential candidate because you're a laboring governor. I appreciate your effort that in spite of the challenges, even the name you have been given, Mr. Project, shows that you are building River State. And uh, I also check your profile, I think, you attended my alma mater, which is University of Port Harcourt, although you came much more later. But I'm not surprised that unique Uniport, you are doing very well. You know, and that's the narrative we must celebrate. You know, building roads, bridges, flyovers, you know, even in the condition of acrimonious politics. Eric, you need to listen to this. I've said so that you deserve special appreciation for the collection, remarkable collection you have made. Because this, your selection, it's inclusive, it represents Nigeria for what we are, you know, in spite of the challenge. And I think that's what we should talk to. Again, help me appreciate Professor Mahmoud Yakub. Once again, a special round of applause for him. I'm not surprised that you are performing, you know, passing through the landmarks, landmarks that the political terrain looks like. And the last election in Anambra confirmed this. I say I'm not surprised, given your pedigree, but I also know the, the role you played in midwifing 2014 National Conference. You know, you are there, you are one of the, the, the powerful movers of that conference. That in spite of the acrimonies, we built consensus for a report. Mike, you are a co-delegate around that time. I think the point is that, that we could even organize that conference shows that Nigeria is, is capable of discussing, of engaging dialogue with all the acrimonies that go with this. And I think we should celebrate what INEC has done. Not only that, I said so at the forum, uh, uh, Nigeria Economic Society, I mean, uh, Economic Summit Group, about a month ago. The Ethiopian former Prime Minister came, and he was talking glowingly about his country, the remarkable uh, you know, transformation they've made, just a month ago. And that's just at a time when Tigray and uh, Ethiopian forces were at war. As I'm talking to you now, the Nobel Prize 
uh, Prime Minister of uh, Ethiopia has stepped down to go to the war front. I mean, but throughout his discussion, he never mentioned that war. Now, what is the lesson of that? I think it's time for us to amplify some of those our successes as, 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 uh, as citizens. The, the, the Nigeria, I think uh, our item say, Arise, compatriots. Nigeria call obey. This is the time compatriots must make proper discussion in a way that we can have proper dialogue. Uh, Comrade uh, uh, Bishop Kuka, you know, I gave you this title of comradeship, giving your passion for provocations, for <laughs> agitation. But you know, I attended your ordination in 2011 uh, when you, you, you are promoted from a Reverend Father to become a bishop. And I wrote an article in my column in, in, in Daily Trust that you are forces for unifying all of us that time. In fact, I met more of my Muslim friends in that your ordination that I could have taught over. And that was in Sokoto. Now, that's in Nigeria that made you possible to do your evangelical, evangelical in Sokoto. And I think we should amplify that. You know, when you use categories of Christians, Muslims, some of us who are taking aback, and I would say, wait, what is going on? At this forum, we should talk about who we are based on the spirit of the Constitution. Nigerian Constitution never defines us as Muslim Christians. It talks of Nigerians. And if you want to go further, it's very dangerous because who is a Christian? Catholic? Baptist? Uh, Methodist? Who is a Muslim? Uh, Ansarudi? Uh, Nawarudi? Uh, the other ones who call them whatever names, you know. I think we are Nigerians. And when we are discussing, let discussion focus along that level. Back to INEC. I want to raise this point, and I think it's important to celebrate some of the sources we are making as nation building. We've done, I don't know, you will guide me very well, Yaku, uh, Professor Yaku. I think we have done close to six transitions now 1999, 2003, uh, 2007, 2000. Uh, 11, 2015, 2019. It's remarkable. In fact, the one that's very dangerous, which we thought would not survive it, 2007 to 2000, and, uh, I think that should be 2000, and, uh, well, the doctrine of uh, necessity, that should be 2007. Nigeria passed through that challenges, and we had the transition. Now, we should celebrate this, that we have gotten uninterrupted democratic transition. We thought the shortcomings that go with it. And for me, this is the kind of narrative which you bring, bring about. Uh, the jam man, he has already left the audience. But the same thing, I mean, this is a jam, you know the story, you said so, Eric. This is a place that snakes used to steal millions of uh, <laughs> uh, Naira, allegedly. Now we have a jam, it's about leadership that is not returning money to public posts. Then Zulu is not here. Please, a round of applause of him in, in absence here. As I was boarding from Milori this morning, I read this report, I, I read this uh, audacious statement that in the next 30 days, it will restore electricity in, uh, in Maiduguri. <coughs> a round of applause for him. He said he will soon, and this is Round up, please. So it's not agonizing. It's organizing and it's delivering governance. So I want to say that, uh, Bishop Kuka, and I don't want to be passionate about this, others who are talking, please stop agonizing. Let's organize. And we need to organize to build a nation. We need inclusive language. We need inclusive orientation, you know, in a way that we build a nation. I mean, you are so romantic about America, Mike. I don't think Americans are so romantic like you. Africa managed COVID-19 better than United States of America. You know, they recorded almost a million deaths because you are the a, a president so notoriously, you know, not on duty, who was busy debating whether there was COVID or not, just like you are talking about, I think we are debating society. Africa said, no, we must own up that we are, this pandemic, you know, African leadership other than uh, the leadership along that line. So what I want to say here, sir, is that I think we should organize our thought processes to make sure that we actually build a nation. There are a lot of challenges, and I'm clear about that. I was appointed to head, uh, I think you talk about this, uh, uh, Professor Radia, and I want to end up on this note. I was appointed to run an institute in Eloring, Michael Imudu Lebo Institute, named after the founding comrade that we have in Africa, Michael Imudu. I was, I was shocked when I got there. The level of decay, you know, the way it has been run down, you know, it's amazing. 
But today, in five months, we are not agonizing. God willing, we are bringing back the industry today. It has now become a new destination for labor studies, not just in Nigeria, but West Africa and Africa as a whole. I think this is the way we should go. This continent can work, and it's working. And that's the last point. We must also not be insular. You know, I'm disappointed. The way Nigerians, I mean, wait, Mike, you're a senior advocate of Nigeria. Me too, and possibly like you, senior advocate in labor, if you call it, I'm a member of National Institute. Bishop Kuka, you are. Even we, our story shows that Nigeria has worked to produce us to this level. And I think the least we can give is to return back to build Nigeria, which our grandfather built with little knowledge. We should build even more. And to do so, we need inclusive language, language that can build cohesion, can bring all of us together. And that's the way it should be. Forward ever, backward never. That's the way my slogan in the labor movement. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, comrade. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Actually, I'm not sure I really wanted to say anything, but, you know, because uh, I cannot say that Isa Remu doesn't understand the issues, because I know he does. Uh, and while here, I wasn't sure whether he was speaking or whether he was master of ceremony or usher or... But look, on these issues, you know, why a lot of these things are... Uh, are personal to me. I'm happy you referred to Professor Oloide as being co-chairman, I mean co-secretary of the National Political Reform Conference. I was appointed secretary of the Political Reform Conference. The Muslims in northern Nigeria, through daily trust, there was no fight people didn't put up that I, Matthew Kuka, was a Christian, not a northerner. And it was part of that protest that in order to pacify the Muslims, Obasanjo was forced to bring Oloyede as my co-secretary. Uh, Patricia Ete was speaker. We cannot sit here and pretend we don't know why she was removed. She was removed because the argument was, how can one man be president, Christian, Senate president, Christian, speaker, most a Christian? That was why the move was made. The accusation was that they, they made accusations against her. She was removed on the grounds that three Christians could not be holding these positions concurrently. And maybe they were right, but the person who came back to represent the Southwest was a Muslim, a Yoruba Muslim. That was in order to, for, to douse the tension. And we are sitting here in Nigeria. Are you going to pretend that you don't know that the iniquity in this country, we've never suffered psychological trauma like we are suffering now? But what did, did people sit for exam and fail? I don't think anybody is ever going to govern this country with this kind of blatant, unacceptable, literally criminal partisanship. So when you talk about Bishop Kuka being divisive, in what sense? I can understand that you are now holding government position. So you have arrived at the table. <laughs> now that is understandable. And uh, as they say, in uh, uh, a professor, a professor who, was, who was really active in the university in Asu, when he was appointed to Abuja, after one month, six months, his colleagues said, oh, God, we are not hearing you. What is happening? He said, Abuja has table manners. When you are eating, you don't talk. <laughs> so I, I, I under, I'm not accusing you of, but I'm just saying all the things you said here had absolutely nothing to do with my paper beyond the preconceived notion that somehow Bishop Kuka has become a divisive factor. Of course, there is difference between darkness and light. Of course, there is difference between truth and lies. Of course, there is difference between justice and injustice. I, and so we won't stand here and be pretending somehow, let's just keep moving. When I delivered my Christmas message, everybody was running riot. They said, Bishop Kuka, you've when people don't want to hear what you're saying in Northern Nigeria, they say you are dividing Christians and Muslims. Uh -uh. There must be a reason why we agree to be in this position, in this place called Nigeria. And Clearly, I said in my Christmas message, unambiguously, 
I said it is more important to be a Muslim and a northerner than to be a Nigerian under the pr procedure for appointments in this, in, this, in, this, in this country. The chairman of the, of, 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 of the APC was a communal receiving Catholic. Suddenly we've now ended up with a country in which it, so when you talk of divisiveness, it is the state that has created the division, not we the victims. So you are blaming the victim. Everywhere you turn in Nigeria, sorry Tony, I will end. Everywhere you turn in Nigeria today, what are people telling you? We are living with injustice. People used to think only Ogoni people were suffering injustice. But now suddenly everywhere you turn and you are telling me about, about, about numbers and about this, <laughs> that we should all be, pre are we going to continue to pretend that yes, let's all move together? Beyond a particular point, you must ask, Nigerians went out of their way and contributed massively to getting President Jonathan out of the way. Let's put it that way. But we didn't do this so that we'll come back and now see that being a Muslim is more important. Because that, that is the impression you're giving. They, and I say it because it is a dent. Because this is not Islam. It's not the religion. The Islam that I know and I grew up with is not what is manifesting itself today. Thank you, sir. Uh, professor, I think uh, my brother comrade, uh, is I, I can't see him here now. Yeah, I think he missed the point solely in terms of uh, challenging the position Bishop Kuka and my humble self took. Uh, if he understands the concept of this topic, national cohesion, we didn't come here to paper over issues, to, to urinate a person and his ego. We came here to interrogate issues. Can Issa Arimu say things are not bad in Nigeria? That things are not worse off in Nigeria today than they were even five, six, seven, eight years ago? Can he say that Nigeria's population of 213.3 million people as at yesterday, by United Nations projection, that we have actually brought out the best in us. Can you say that it is not ethnic groupings that are still at play in Nigeria today because there is no nationhood? Can you pretend not to know that we don't still tolerate our religious and ethnic diversities? Can you pretend to feel that when you are filling a form and they are asking you the state of birth, after that they say local government area of origin, after that they ask you your religion, automatically when they get some of this data, you are out of certain jobs and you will not get it because of either your religion or where you come from or your local government or your language. Is that how to build a nation? So I think that these issues... We should interrogate them. We should not pretend and, and continue to treat a serious ailment like leprosy with a drug meant for eczema. Pretending that it will go away. Like the proverbial ostrich burying her head in the sand. Pretending that her backside is not seen. We cannot continue to do that. So we must inter interrogate this issue. The reason you must go historical to know what happened before is the case of the vehicle the, the windshield in front is very large so that you can see the front. But by the side of the car, there's a small mirror to enable you to see the back to know where you are coming from. Because today is the tomorrow we discussed yesterday. So we must interrogate Nigeria. Why are we failing? Why are we not succeeding? Then we have to look at other countries that did it well and got it right. A country's leadership comes into play when there are challenges. President David N. Sehowa, Prime Minister Winston Churchill, great men of history, Martin Luther King Jr., for example, who worked so that Obama could run. Now, if you don't interrogate these issues and you pretend that all is well, then for so long are we going to pretend that there's a difference between momoi and beans and akara. 
they had one and the same. We must push forward. It was uh, Albert Einstein, the father, a physicist, a great physicist, who gave rise to the atomic bomb, who once said, it's only a madman who continues to do things the same way and hope for different results. So we need a strong leadership. But apart from that, we need a strong followership, interrogative civil society. Because without a strong civil populace, a leadership can run riotous. Power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So Thank you we very must much. continue to challenge the status quo. That is what we are here to do, Isa Remo. Thank you. Not to come and pretend that all is well in Nigeria. Nigeria is sick. Nigeria is sick. In fact, it's gasping for, for breath. It's, 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 it's under oxygen. And we cannot pretend. We have to pull out Nigeria through social justice, equity, egalitarianism, and then we can have national cohesion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.